We're gonna go back and do it one more time. Everybody, God of mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for an unforgettable evening of soul-stirring music and worship. The National Baptist Convention of America, in collaboration with the Hattie Wade Academy of Church Music and Worship Arts, proudly presents John P. Key, live in concert. Join us on Thursday, June 29, at 7 p.m., at St. Stephen Baptist Church, located at 1018 South 15th Street in Louisville, for an unbelievable evening with renowned gospel artist, John P. Key. This extraordinary event will also be an opportunity for the Hattie Wade Academy of Church Music and Worship Arts to pay tribute to an exceptional individual. We will honor Jeffrey Lavely for his years of dedicated service in music ministry. Make plans now for this free event. Join us this Thursday at 7 p.m. to experience the soul-stirring performance of John P. Key, live in concert. Hello, I'm Kevin James, Music Director of the National Baptist Convention of America International Incorporated, and I'm here to invite you to participate in our Hattie Wade Academy of Church Music and Worship Arts, which will take place on June the 27th through June the 29th on the campus of the Music School of Simmons College of Kentucky on the corner of 18th and Dumanil Streets. The Hattie Wade Academy is two and a half days of workshop classes, lectures, and come pouring to us for these two and a half days. Dr. Leo Davis is the former minister of music of the Mississippi Boulevard Church uh, there in Memphis, Tennessee. He will come and share with us. And then Dr. Eddie Robinson, the minister of music of the Springfield Baptist Church in Conyers, Georgia. You know him from leading songs and writing songs like he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. God is in the room. He will be here to share with us. And then the maestro himself, Minister Patrick Lundy, of the Ministers of Music and the Minister of Music of the Reeds Temple AME Church there in Washington, D.C. will be here to share with us. We want you to participate in the Hattie Wade Academy 
of church music and worship arts. Therefore, to register and to get more information, please go to the Simmons College website and look for Hattie Wade Academy of Church Music and Worship Arts. God bless you and see you there. We're gonna go back and do it one more time. Everybody, God of mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for an unforgettable. Dear sisters and brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The word of God for the people of God. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. As we gather on this great day that you have made, we say thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day. Allowing us to lay down on last evening and woke us up early this morning on due time. And God, we say thank you. And as we gather in this best of spot and as we come to learn more about you, we pray now and as we gather in this devotion this morning that we come with a heart of thanksgiving and a heart of praise. We pray now that you will Allow us, O oh God, if you allow us to rest on last evening, that you will refresh us this morning through your word. Open our ears, our minds to receive what the Spirit will have to say. Bless our gathering this morning. It's in your name we do praise you, from whom all blessings flow. It's in the name that is above every name. Declare that every knee shall bow and that every tongue shall confess that you are the Lord to the glory of God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. At this time we're going to ask our music ministry to give us a selection. And then we're going to have our devotion and Bible study lesson this morning by the Reverend Deborah Mack of Texas. He's going to come after music selection from our music ministry. Amen. church <clears throat> we are often tossed and driven on this rest this sea of time some skies howling tempests of succeed the bright sunshine in that land a perfect day 
We certainly offer praise unto our God this morning, thanking him for all of his benevolence that he has evidenced toward each of us, even by our presence here on this morning to our illustrious uh, president, Dr. Tolbert, uh, to our director of the con Congress, uh, Dr. Taylor, to our dean, uh, Dr. Mays, to our presider uh, this morning, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We're thankful unto God again for the wonderful opportunity that he has provided us even to be present on this morning. The program calls for devotion and then our Bible uh, message for our devotional scripture. Let me call our attention to the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 16, concluding with verse 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. So obviously here we have the people of God facing the greatest crisis that they have ever faced. They have faced the crisis of a dead Jesus. What is the worst thing that could happen to uh, followers of God than to have a Savior who has died? And yet they find out that even though he has died, God has raised him from the dead. And because he has been raised from the dead, he has evidenced unto them that all power is in his hand. He even has power over death. So therefore they end up worshiping him. They had been scattered and now he has gathered them together. Once again, they worship him. And as they are worshiping him, he sends them to work. All of us, as we are in our private and personal devotions, ought to be reminded of the fact that the one we worship is also the one we must work for. And so he is sending us to do those things that are pleasing unto him, reminding us that all power is in his hand. May we pray. Lord God, our Father, how we bless your name today. We thank you, Lord, for all of the many blessings that we have been recipients of, even on this very morning. We certainly thank you, Lord, for the leadership of this convention. We thank you for the leadership of this Congress. We thank you for all of the participants, those who are here and those who are separated from us at this moment. We thank you, Lord, that after all we've been through, you still have us here, that you're holding us together. We pray that you'll help us to stay focused on the work that you have assigned unto our hands, and we pray that you would bless the work in order that your kingdom might profit and benefit from your investing in us. We pray for everything that will take place on this morning and on this day. We pray, Lord, that you would certainly bless it in a special way. And again, in a fresh, we devote ourselves unto you and again unto the work that you've assigned unto our hands. For our time of looking in your word together for this Bible message this morning, our prayer is that you would illuminate our hearts and minds, open up your word unto us, that we might see everything you want us to see out of your word this morning. And as a result of it, we might rush out and put into practice the principles that your word teaches us. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you. I am honored uh, again this morning. Dr. Taylor asked me on yesterday after all of the events took place uh, as relates to the weather and people being unable to get here if I would stand uh, in the stead of Dr. Lance Watson this morning. I assure you I am no uh, Dr. Lance Watson. I was certainly looking forward to hearing uh, him, but I appreciate the confidence uh, that Dr. Taylor has expressed that I would be uh, an adequate substitute this morning. I want to for our time of uh, this Bible lesson, invite your attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5 and verse this is 1 through 11. I realize that's a lengthy portion of Scripture, but I want us to quickly walk through it this morning in the allotted time. Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have taught all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. 
And when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the drought of fishes that they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. I'd like to focus our attention for this Bible lesson this morning on these words, Jesus the Innovator. Jesus the Innovator. Anybody who is familiar with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has to be familiar with the fact that Jesus, by any standard, would have to be considered a genius. Jesus has a way of using his imagination uh, to the extent that he is able to see things in a way that nobody else has been able to see them. It is interesting as we look at the ministry and life of Jesus to realize that Jesus knows how to handle change. Jesus knows how to deal with the different dilemmas that life has a tendency to confront us with. And so, therefore, we pay close attention to him. John, in chapter 1, verse 14, shares with us that the word became flesh. He has already pointed out that the word uh, is God, that the word was with God. But he says the word became flesh flesh. God the Son became a human being. He became Jesus Christ. And so therefore as we look at the pages of scripture at the life of Jesus as it's chronicled there, we find out that we have the word walking and we have the word talking. And so therefore everything that Jesus says we hang upon it because that's the word. That's God speaking unto us. But again not only do we listen to every word that he says but we watch every step that he takes because he's always teaching us something. He's always showing us how to handle the dilemmas that we are going to face in life. And so as we come to the portion of scripture that I have read today, we are watching Jesus as he goes to work because once again, he is the supreme example of everything that we as believers need to do. Now, as we watch him in chapter number five, we want to simply reflect just a bit on what he was doing at the conclusion of chapter four. In chapter four, we see that Jesus has been spending some time with the people who are gathered in the place of worship called the synagogue. While he is there, Jesus has engaged in a healing ministry. After he engages in the healing ministry, then we notice, his, notice that he goes and he starts uh, casting out demons. But then also he goes to Peter's uh, mother-in-law's house and he heals her. And then after that, he goes again to healing many sick people and casting out demons demons. One of the things that I would therefore like to call to our attention that you see with Jesus is that he moves out of those situations and the Bible says it came to pass uh, that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God and now he is standing by the lake of Gennesaret. What we see in the ministry of Jesus is we see these shifting scenes. We see Jesus moving from one scene to another scene. That's I think very helpful for us because it can help us understand that ministry is always fluid. You never know what's going to happen with ministry. None of us has any way of knowing what we're going to face from day to day and from year to year. Nobody can honestly say that they anticipated the pandemic. Nobody can honestly say that when there have been economic downturns, we had anticipated that. Life is, again, fluid and ministry is fluid. Things are always changing and we have to learn how to deal with change as it is coming about. We cannot stop change, but we must learn how to adapt to change. Who better to show us how to do it than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? The scene that we are looking at in this fifth chapter we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is moving along uh, and people are following him. There are people who the Bible says want to hear the word of God. They are now walking along the seashore and as you look out and see the scene or the setting, you see that there are some fishermen who have been fishing, it appears, uh, by night and now they are washing their net. They are not cleaning and processing fish. They are washing and cleaning their net. On the other hand, you see that their boats have already been pulled out of the water 
as well. It is the kind of scene as you look at it that you would, consume, you would conclude at this particular point that there is nothing meaningful that can take place here. You would imagine that this would have been the kind of place where you would have had somebody to just tell everybody, everybody keep moving. Nothing can happen here. No ministry can take place in this environment. I think that that can be very helpful unto us because when the pandemic came, many people concluded that there was no ministry that could take place because the scene has shifted because circumstances had changed. Many pe people became disenchanted and felt that nothing of any significance could take place as a result of the changing of the situation. But here we find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ looking at this particular scene and situation but not becoming discouraged, not deciding that nothing could happen in this particular environment. But notice what Jesus seems to do is he ponders the possibilities. Jesus looks at this situation and as he looks at it, he is pondering what kinds of things can happen even in the midst of an unpromising kind of situation. Even when odds seem to be against anything positive happening, Jesus still looks at the situation and ponders the possibility. And then Jesus reaches this conclusion. It is obvious. Jesus concludes that there is potential in the problem. And that is one of the things that can help all of us, particularly pastors and leaders and church workers, uh, when you consider the fact that there is always a potential in the problem. That even though there are problems, even though circumstances, again, do not seem to be favorable, it is not a time for us to give up, but rather it is a time for us to look for the potential that's in the problem. What can happen in this situation? I do not have a synagogue uh, to sit down and teach in at this particular moment. I have people who are surrounding me and want to hear the word of God, but they are pressing upon me so that I do not have a stage or a pulpit area where I can have just a bit of distance so I can minister to these people. So there is a problem that I have, but what is the potential in the problem? It is very easy for all of us at times uh, to look around and see what we don't have and who we don't have, but sometimes we have to look at our uh, problem and say, what is the potential here? What is it that we do have. And again, I think the pandemic has, teach, has taught all of us that. This is a pertinent point that I think we can lift from this experience with Jesus, that vision sees solutions. Whenever there is a visionary, you don't need a visionary to tell you about yesterday. You don't need a visionary to simply tell you what's wrong. You need a visionary who sees solutions. You need a visionary who is looking beyond what is obvious and seeing that which is not obvious. You need a visionary who can look and not just see what is, but also see what can be. It always has to start with vision. And people who are around us need us to step forth with vision so that they can see that there is more than what initially meets their eye. And so therefore, what Jesus decides to do is Jesus looks at the situation and decides that he can reallocate resources. He decides that he can take what is available and use it in a different way. Many of us, when the pandemic uh, came up, some of us already had our social media uh, set up to where we were able to flow uh, right on into a new way of ministry. Others had to make some significant changes. But during that particular time, I think just about everybody figured out that we could use available resources in a different way. And so Jesus looks at the situation and in his mind, he seems to have reached this conclusion that this can be that. And I think that that is crucial that all of us look at what we are facing and reach the conclusion that this can be that. So then we looked at our cell phone and said, you know what, this can now become the sanctuary. This can now become the means of us transmitting the gospel message to those who cannot meet in the same building with us. We might have also come to the conclusion that this could be that in the sense that we have this young teenager that people consider a little uh, geek as it relates to technology. They consider that young person a nerd and yet we look at that young person now and say this young person can now become my IT person. This young person can now take the knowledge that he or she has and help use it in a way so that this can become that. And we see that Jesus does that because Jesus looks at the situation and Jesus decides that 
This is a seashore, but the seashore can become a sanctuary. And then Jesus looks at a boat, and when he looks at the boat, Jesus says that this boat can become a floating pulpit. So he begins to reallocate the resources in such a way that he says, we don't have to move on from where we are. I can do ministry right where I am, but I'm going to have to do ministry in a way that people are not accustomed to it being done. Whenever you are innovative, whenever you are creative, whenever you use your imagination, Uh, in ministry, there will be people who will say things like, we've never done it that way before. There will be people who will say, I just can't see it. And you cannot become frustrated and angry with people who cannot see it. That's simply a confession. They are confessing unto you that my faith is not strong enough for you to see what I see. But visionaries must always remember that it is your responsibility to see it before other people see it. Walt Disney, who uh, created a Disney World, a Disney the land uh, he died, I think, before Disney World was completed. And many of the workers who had worked with him were very sad. And they were sad about the fact because they said, Walt Disney never saw Disney World. But somebody quickly corrected them and told them that, yes, Walt Disney saw it first. Walt Disney was the one that saw it. If he had not seen it, there would be no uh, Disney World. And so for those of us who are leading, we must follow the example of Jesus. Jesus was able to see what others were not able to see, and he realized that this could be used for that. He also saw the fishermen, and he understood that they were fishermen, but he, unlike in the synagogue, did not have any ministry assistants who would have brought him the scroll and whatever else was needed in the synagogue setting. But now he takes these fishermen and decides that he can use them to be his pulpit attendants. Therefore, he calls Simon and says, Simon, what I would like for you to do is take your boat and just get out a little way from the shore. Just give me enough space where I can have enough distance to adequately be able to minister to those who are here. Now, also, we notice with that uh, that Jesus focused on priorities. Jesus, even though he is in a different setting, even though the scene has changed, his priority never did. The priority of Jesus was always to make disciples, to always share with people the word of God. And so while the people are there, Jesus moves into the boat, uses it as a floating pulpit, and preaches the word of God. So he says to Peter, Peter, I need to use your boat for ministry. Now he understood that this was not a preaching boat, this was a fishing boat. He understood that Peter's priority was to feed his family and to secure the finances through the preaching business. And yet Jesus said unto him, what I want you to do is let me use your boat for preaching. My preaching is a higher priority than your fishing enterprise. Peter uh, concedes to allow Jesus to use his boat. He moves out and so Jesus preaches to the people. As Jesus preaches to the people, you will notice after he finished his preaching that Jesus uh, allows us to see how this whole experience has been a movement from emptiness to fullness. When Jesus shows up and sees the initial scene, there is emptiness everywhere he looks. He looks and the people who are following him, their souls are empty. They are desirous to be fed the living bread of God. They are seeking and searching for something that will satisfy the emptiness in their hearts. And then Jesus looks and he sees these boats. These boats are empty. They're empty because the fishermen have gone out of the boats. He looks at the nets and the nets are empty because no fish have been taken by them. So then Jesus now is about to fill all of those situations. And so he has, first of all, he takes the priority of filling men's soul. Once men and women have received the word of God, then they have been able to say as a songwriter uh, with uh, conclusiveness that bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Jesus had done that for them. And so now the multitude is full. After Jesus finishes taking care of the kingdom business, then he turns to Peter's business. He has always planned on taking care of all the business that needed to be addressed, but he starts with the kingdom of God. Let's take care, he says, of the kingdom business first, and then we'll move to your business. No matter how the scene shifts, our business must never change. No matter what else is going on around us, our focus has to stay on uh, the priority of sharing the word of God and making disciples. So then Jesus tells Peter, now, Peter, now that you've allowed me to use your boat 
uh, to minister, now launch out into the deep because I'm going to allow you to catch some fish. Peter, at this particular point, again, does not see what Jesus sees. And so initially he is reluctant but says, nevertheless, which means I don't really see what you see. I don't really believe that this is a wise move. I want you to know we've already expended a lot of energy. I want you to know we do this for a living. We are professional fishermen. And so therefore, I obey you, but not with any anticipation of anything special happening. Nevertheless, I will lunch out uh, into the deep and then I will go on and cast out my net solely because you have asked me to do it. Well, of course, once he cast out his net, then the net became so full of fish that the net began to break because Jesus wanted to share with him the principle that he shared in Matthew, I think, 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things I'll add unto you. So he wanted them to understand, I have been always been able to meet your need, but before I meet your need, I want you to set your priorities straight. Put the kingdom first, and then I will bless you with what you need. Let me use your boat for kingdom purposes first. Now we'll use your boat for the purpose for which you have purposed it. And so therefore, now they have moved from empty nets and empty boats to full boats and to full nets because Jesus, again, moves them with his innovation from emptiness to fullness. And then finally, after they catch so many fish, their minds shift from the fish to the person of Jesus Christ. Christ. They look at him and they are marveling at the fact that Jesus could cause this miracle of this great catch of fish. Peter therefore realizes that Jesus is indeed somebody special and unique and says, get away from me because I am a sinful man. And he worships, worships Jesus. And then Jesus helps them understand that, listen, I know that you have been fishing for fish, but what I want you to understand now, I am going to have you to be fishers of men. What he does now is take men who really had somewhat of an empty purpose for their life. Their life was nothing more than to wake up in the morning, go out and try to make money uh, to secure the funds that would be needed to just make it from day to day and to feed their families. Jesus understood the necessity of that, but he understood that if they were going to really have full lives, if their lives were going to really have true meaning, then they needed a higher purpose to live for than just catching fish. And so Jesus says, what I want you all to do now is I want you to follow me. And as you follow me, I am going to make you to become fishers of men. I say unto us today in conclusion that just as <clears throat> Jesus walks with uh, these individuals, Jesus wants to walk with each of us as well. We have come through the pandemic. Everybody is trying to figure out exactly what do you do in this situation. Everybody is concluding that there is no expert. Nobody has all of the answers. But I simply want to remind all of us to keep on walking with and following Jesus. He is innovative. He knows what he's doing. He's going to give us the answers that we need. And he's going to show us that we can take what we have, reallocate our resources, that this can be used for that, and that Jesus can cause us to still accomplish the kingdom's agenda, even as we are coming out of this pandemic. God bless you. devotion this morning. At this time, we're going to have our dean. He's coming. He's going to give us direction for our morning session. Let me say good morning to all who are present in the sanctuary. We're getting ready to get from this place to our class sessions. And the youth will be here at St. Stephen Church. And we do have some other few classes that will be at St. Stephen's Church of Adults. But a number of adult classes will be on the campus of Simmons College in Parish Hall and Stewart Hall. We had a flyer, we had a piece of paper that we want you to take advantage of, that it has the class spaces and class assignments 
many of the St. Stephen's Church members as wonderful hosting that they're doing are in position to answer your questions about directions as to where you're going to be set up for your classes. I want that you would be very diligent in your stewardship of time because we know it's going to take some time to get to the class. Teachers, be sure to release your class in a timely fashion that is 1020, 1020 to allow them to leave your class at the ending and return to the sanctuary for our general assembly of the adult portion of the Congress and Dr. J. Roy Morrison, who hosted us last year in Orlando, will be our preacher for that time. Those are the announcements that, uh, and instructions that we'd like to share with you. Come on, let's go and study together the Word of God. Thank you, Pastor Mac. Thank you for doing an awesome job leading the Bible's discussion on today. God bless you. Hello, I'm Kevin James, Music Director of the National Baptist Convention of America International Incorporated, and I'm here to invite you to participate in our Hattie Wade Academy of Church Music and Worship Arts, which will take place on June the 27th through June the 29th on the campus of the Music School of Simmons College of Kentucky.